Greetings, this is Greg. I want to talk about the Power Booster, which is a new performance offering from Euro Compulsion, and of course I'll include the quarter mile times for it, and for comparison, I'll add in the quarter mile times for various combinations of performance parts on the Fiat 124. As always, I need to state I do work closely with Euro Compulsion in development and testing of their products, so I am financially tied to this stuff. Euro Compulsion has released the Power Booster for the Fiat 1.4 multi-air turbo engine. This is a tuning module, also known as a piggyback module. It does not reprogram the car's ECU. Instead, it increases power by altering the signals in and out of the ECU. There are already a lot of these types of devices on the market for these engines, so what makes this one different? Well, first of all, it has proven performance at the drag strip. For some reason, that seems to be pretty rare in this market. And as a standalone piggyback, it's a strong performer. Furthermore, and I think this is very significant, it can be combined with ECU tunes to act as a boost controller on cars which are already tuned and or highly modified. There are some limitations there and precautions which should be taken, which I'll talk about later in the video. I'll start by talking about it as a standalone tuning product. As I mentioned, it's easy to install. It only connects to two sensors under the hood. They're both easy to access. You don't need to connect a separate ground wire or tap into a separate power source. The unit gets everything it needs from those two underhood sensors it connects to. Now there is one additional wire that plugs into the unit that you will need to run into the driver's area for the control head. That's pretty easy to do as Fiat provided a nice grommet in the firewall that's perfect for our purposes. And that's present on the 124, 500Ls, and uh, 500 Abarts, as well as the Alfa Romeos that use this engine, uh, certain versions of the Giulietta and the Me Too. Now this controller allows the driver to select one of four settings. They have names, but functionally think of them as off, one, two, and three. When in the off setting, the module makes no changes. Then there are three more settings, each one providing a little bit higher level of performance than the previous one. The upside of this piggyback is that it's easy to install and it's easy to remove, and once removed, it doesn't leave any trace that it was ever there. These types of devices tend to be popular for customers who have cars uh, still on their warranty period or for leased cars, or in situations where the owner just plans for one reason or another to return the car to its original configuration at some point. Now the downside of piggybacks is that they don't have the same level of ultimate performance of a good flash tune like Euro Compulsion's Eurodrive product line, nor can they offer all of the same features. For example, while a piggyback can in some cases raise power to similar levels, it can't increase the rev limiter, it can't add in launch control, or many of the other options commonly found on flash tunes. So how well does this power booster perform? Well, on my modified Fiat 124, it ran a 14.398 in the quarter mile at an actual drag strip. And that wasn't even its very best time. That's just a representative time. Now, that's really fast for one of these cars. And I searched high and low for times from a competing product at an actual drag strip and I couldn't find a single competing piggyback with a better time or a time that was even close. Not only that, all the times I did find that were faster at the drag strip and on gasoline were from cars with Euro Compulsion's Eurodrive flash tune. So at the moment, it seems that on gasoline, this piggyback is faster than the competitor's flash tunes in at least most, if not all, cases. So by piggyback standards, this thing is really fast. Now I want to stress a couple of things here. I'm looking at actual drag strip results, not numbers from a phone app. Some of those phone apps are accurate, but none are as accurate as the timing setup from a real drag strip. Furthermore, it's really easy to cheat with a phone app, and there are some unscrupulous types out there that will do that. So while I think these apps are great for measuring your own progress, Unless there are others getting similar results from a similar set of mods at a real drag strip, I just don't put a lot of weight in individual phone app results. I could make an entire video on how to game the system with the Draggy app to get faster numbers than you will ever see on a real track. It's actually pretty easy. So that 14.398 is at an actual drag strip, and I think it's a very good time for a piggyback. 
However, my car has a number of mods on it contributing to the results. I ran it on the Power Booster's highest setting, which is called Race. It's the third setting. I have very sticky tires on the car, which I've since disposed of because their performance on anything other than a perfect road was poor. They were great at the track, though, but overall I just didn't like them. The car was also set up with nearly every Euro Compulsion performance enhancing mod available at the time. For example, that 14.398 time was with a V4 intake, which is the best performing intake on the market for these cars. It's a true ram air and cold air setup. On the exhaust side, I had the Euro Compulsion cross pipe. The rest of the exhaust was factory, including the catalytic converter. I've dyno tested a lot of exhaust systems for this car. Most of the losses aft of the cat are in the cross pipe. So by replacing that, you get all the power of the competing full cat back 2.5 inch exhaust systems without the extra expense and hassle. Plus, you can combine the cross pipe with the factory's optional record Monza exhaust, which I have on the car. The record Monza doesn't add even one horsepower or save one ounce of weight, but it sure sounds good and personally I love it, which is why it's on my car. Up front, I had the Euro Compulsion Race Intercooler. It's simply the best intercooling solution on the market for these cars. I also ran EC's Big Turbo. Now, I don't think this turbo contributes any meaningful amount to the time in this case. We've done a lot of testing on this, and unless specifically tuned for the turbo and with bigger injectors, there isn't a lot of performance to be gained by the turbo swap itself. This will become clear as we look at Euro Compulsion's other quarter mile times later in this video. So to be clear, that 14.398 time is with really good tires. I'm not a bad driver, I'm no pro, and I weigh 220 pounds, but I am at least competent, and I made a serious effort here. Most of all, the booster was backed up by some really good surrounding mods. I would guess that the booster by itself would put the 124 at around 14.65, maybe 14.7, probably about the same as a Phase 1 tune, but that's admittedly a bit of a guess. Perhaps the best thing about this booster is the ability to use it on top of an ECU flash tune. In other words, let's suppose you have a flash tune from Brand X. It's running pretty well, has features you like, but you want more power. The tune you have is mild. You've added some supporting mods and want to exploit them by adding more boost. In that case, the power booster is just right for you. Another situation is you're happy with your flash tune. Perhaps you're running Euro Compulsion's Phase 1 tune. You like it as a daily driver tune, and your non Abart 124 doesn't have a sport mode switch, so you can only run one tune at a time. However, you want to take the car to the track and run race fuel. In order to take advantage of the higher octane, you need to select between different modes to switch between 91 octane pump gas and the higher octane race fuel. The booster's control head will allow you to do that. In testing, I did exactly this with Euro Compulsion's Phase 1 tune, which is by design a mild tune. To keep it on the safe side, I put in 93 octane fuel from the one station I know of in my area that sells it. 91 is the norm out here. With the boost on the maximum setting, the car ran a blistering 14.157 quarter mile. For comparison, Let's look at more quarter mile uh, data from Euro Compulsion's uh, tuned Fiat 124s. I'm going to stick with manual transmission abarts to keep this as consistent as I can, but EC does have really fast tunes for the automatic cars as well. I ran this car in stock form quite a bit. I never got faster than 15.3. I do have times that corrected to 15.2 but in this video I'm using all actual times without corrections. I should note that the first day we took it to the track we could only run about 15.7, which is terrible, but there were extenuating circumstances outlined in this video from Euro Compulsion. That link is in the description. I know some magazines say the 124 Abart can run 14.9. Maybe they could do it, but I tried really hard and I couldn't. 15.2 is absolutely the best I could get. Actually, the best actual time I got was 15.3 something. 
Now I don't have a time slip for a phase one, one, two, four, but I'm confident it runs about 14.65, maybe 14.7. Over on Driven District's channel, he has done a lot of performance testing of phase one, he did zero to 60, stuff like that. I'll link that uh, in the description. My car with phase two runs in the 14.3s. In this car, the car had a completely stock exhaust system, a V4 intake, and the Euro Compulsion intercooler. It's also packing the upgraded turbo, but without the turbo specific tune optimization. And without that optimization, the turbo doesn't do much for this engine. It's a little better at the high end, but a little bit weaker down low. It ends up being pretty much a wash. We do have customers who have run phase two without the turbo upgrade and we know based on their results at the drag strip it's only a few hundredths of a second slower in the quarter mile at the worst. Euro Compulsion's phase two tune with either the stock or EC upgraded turbo runs between 14.3 and 14.4 in the quarter mile with only a V4 intake and intercooler supporting it, no exhaust mods. Euro Compulsion does offer a big turbo tune optimization for phase two, which puts the car into the 14 twos. I can't find the time slips from the day I did that, but that's what it does. I'll call it 14.25. Again, I couldn't find the time slips. I'm sorry about that, but I know it did that and did it many times. Now what I do have is a time slip for phase two with turbo optimization and big injectors. This isn't exactly an official tune. I don't think it's specifically listed on the website, but it's what you get if you have phase three in sport mode and phase two in non-sport mode, which is how my car is set up. I run it that way because I'd normally have to run on 91 octane and phase three requires 93. So I have to be able to use both in my car. Anyhow, I got the time for this uh, unusual variant of phase two by accident when I was trying to test phase three, but I forgot to put the car in sport mode. In other words, this is what I run in non-sport mode in my phase three daily driver. It's essentially just like phase two with turbo optimization. However, as phase three requires bigger injectors, there are minor tuning changes related to the injectors, and it has just a hair more at the high end. In that same configuration with phase three, the car runs in the high 13s with no problems. Note that none of the runs I show were done under ideal conditions. It's always a density altitude well above sea level. So I'm showing real world numbers that a typical Euro Compulsion customer would be able to duplicate if they ran the same mod list, same tires, and any reasonable level of driving skill. So let's put in the numbers from the EC Booster. You can see that on its hottest setting with supporting mods, it's quite a bit faster than a phase one tune and not too far behind phase three, although phase one with those supporting mods would probably be in the same ballpark. Now, I have to say that the times for the booster were with those sticky, barely legal street tires, so it's probably not quite as close a contest as it otherwise looks. Also, the straight phase two run was done without the Euro Compulsion cross pipe in the exhaust, which was on the car for the runs with the booster. So the real world difference here is probably a bit greater in favor of the phase two flash tune, but still, I think the booster looks very good here. Let's look at the booster's time when combined with phase one. Note that it's faster than any phase two, but again, part of that's the tires we used. The phase three times are on legit street tires. They're Pirelli's and a quality tire, but they're kind of an all season tire. These are the tires we actually use and recommend for these cars. It's what I drive my car on every day, and we do sell those tires also. Now, I should also specify that this is with the booster standard Fiat tune installed and turned to the highest setting on top of the phase one tune that's on the ECU. That's a somewhat extreme combination, and if I ran that all the time, I would probably want to add in some octane booster to get it up around 95 octane for extra safety, especially if running this without an intercooler upgrade. In a normal situation, if the customer wants to use the booster to, um, as an add-on device, we would set it up to add one, two, and three pounds of boost for each of those three settings. 
or if the customer specifies different numbers, we can do that. It could be two, three, four, or whatever. Just keep in mind that you have to keep it realistic. These cars do have hardware limitations, and not all flash tunes can just accept another three pounds of boost without supporting mods or higher octane fuel. Some can. Euro Compulsion's Phase 1 tune is an example. However, Euro Compulsion's Phase 2 tune can't take more than about an extra one pound of boost via the booster because it runs into hardware limitations. Thus, adding the booster to a Phase 2 car would be somewhat pointless in my opinion. As of the time of this video's release, it can't be used with Phase 3 either, although that may change after more testing. Now let's talk about how to do this and keep things safe. And if using the booster by itself, meaning with other bolt-on mods but not in combination with a flash tune, then it's very safe. But if you're using the booster on top of a flash tune, it has the potential to end badly. But as with anything else, if you take the proper precautions, it's going to be just fine. And I've been testing this for quite a while, and I think if you stick with my guidelines, you're never going to have a problem. First of all, consider the tune you're doing this with. I've tested it with Euro Compulsions Phase 1, so I'll start there. This is a 91 octane tune, and it's mild, so if adding a booster, go with 93 octane as a minimum. That alone will get you some extra protection, and enough in my case, because the other mods on the car, the V4 intake, the big intercooler, and the cross pipe specifically, help things out quite a bit here. Furthermore, I have an air intake temperature gauge in my car, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. If you want to do this without these mods, I suggest going with about 95 octane fuel, and here's how you do that. There are, of course, a number of ways, but I suggest using VP Racing's Octanium. There are specific reasons I'm suggesting this brand over the others, one of which is that this stuff is commonly available at the big name auto parts stores. First of all, make sure you're using the unleaded version. There is a leaded version in a similar looking can, and they're usually right next to each other on the shelves, and that leaded version will ruin your O2 sensor in short order, so don't screw this up. It'll also wreck the catalytic converter. Next, we need to figure out how much of this stuff to add. I'll walk you through it. There is potential to add up to seven full octane numbers. In other words, you could make 93 octane pump gas into 100 octane gas, but there would be downsides to that, which I'll talk about in a minute. If we do the math, the way it works out is by adding one fluid ounce, remember that's a unit of volume, uh, per gallon, one fluid ounce per gallon, we add about 3.75 octane numbers. That's rounding it on the safe side. It's really about 0.975 uh, ounces per gallon, but my measuring cup action isn't that precise, so I'm just calling this one ounce per gallon, one fluid ounce per gallon. Now the 124 is a 12-gallon tank, so if you add 6 fluid ounces to a half tank of 93 octane pump gas, you have 96.75 octane, which is a lot, easily enough to protect the car in this scenario. So normally, you would run the car with just pump gas, and when you plan to use the booster, either for a track day or a day of extra-spirited driving with your friends, you may add in some octanium for the added protection, and then bump the boost up. With the, with the control head on the, for the booster. Of course, there's a risk that you would accidentally turn the booster up without the added octane. Now, to mitigate that risk, I suggest using a boost gauge with an overboost alarm on it, like the one from Vatrix, which is what I use. As an example, a normal phase one tune runs about 22, 23 pounds of peak boost, so set the alarm to 25. That way, if you accidentally activate the booster somehow, you'll get a warning that you did so. And then, of course, when you want to use the booster, you add the octane, reset your alarm to, say, 27 pounds, and you're good to go. Just remember to set it back again when you refuel with straight pump gas. One of the biggest contributing factors to knock, which you can monitor, is the charge air temperature after the intercooler. I have a Vatrix gauge for that. I have seen Driven District use a combination OBD2 gauge for the same purpose, which seems great. When you monitor this, you'll be surprised how much that temperature varies, and you'll be surprised how much it rises in some mundane situations. For example, if you park the car, shut it off, go into a store for 20 minutes and come out, you'll find that the temperature, uh, the intake air temperature after the intercooler, 
will have risen a significant amount and it takes quite a bit of driving to get it come back down. The same thing is true when you're sitting in traffic. As a general rule, if I see over 110 degrees Fahrenheit on the gauge, I wouldn't run the booster with a tune. I would set it back to off. Um, unless I knew for sure I had extra octane in the fuel tank. Now, another consideration is just how much extra boost you run. I, set, I suggest setting it up for an additional one, two, or three pounds of boost. And to set it up that way, um, when you order it, Euro Compulsion needs to know how much peak boost you're currently running. And keep in mind, it's not going to be exact. That three might be 3.2 or might be 2.9. There's a little bit of a ballpark uh, setup with these things. But that one, two, or three pounds of boost, that's going to be safe with any reasonable precautions. If you're going up to four or five, you're starting to play with fire. You can do it, but you may want even more octane. So let's look at that option. Notice VP Racing's chart clearly shows diminishing returns as you use more and more octanium. Sure, you can add six points of, uh, or six octane numbers and get from 93 up to 99 or even slightly more, but it takes a lot of this stuff to do it. To add six octane numbers, we would have to add about 2.5 fluid ounces per gallon, or about a half a can for a half a tank of fuel. This stuff's around 30 bucks a can, so that's going to get ex expensive. Not as expensive as an engine overhaul, so depending on what you're doing, it may be worth it. However, staying with a max increase of about 3 pounds of boost and going with the one fluid ounce per gallon is much more economical, will be safe, and will get you a lot more power in most cases. Also note that the further to the right you go on this chart, the more in the red you are. What that's signifying is that this stuff will cause an orangish coating on the spark plugs and the O2 sensors, which will shorten their life. Now, if you're using this as I suggest, which as a, as a temporary power booster for track days or special days, it's going to be fine. However, if you use this stuff in larger quantities than that one fluid ounce per gallon and you're doing it every time you drive the car, well, you're going to have to expect to replace your O2 sensor every 30,000 miles or so. Now that's about all I have. This booster has had over two years of testing. Um, we've been working on this thing on multiple cars a lot. It performs really well. It's rock solid reliable. It's a great standalone piggyback and if used properly can seriously boost the performance of cars that are already running ECU tunes. Before I go I want to mention that there are a lot more serious performance products coming from Euro Compulsion. We are not nearly done with the Fiat 1.4 multi-year turbo. There are quite a few products I wish I could talk about, all of which build upon the current product line. Phase 3 is not near anywhere the end of the line, although the Phase 3 requirements, the turbo, intercooler, injectors, and so on, will be required for the next levels of power from EC, which are coming soon. That's all for now, and have a great day.